And welcome back to another Electronics and More video. In today's video, I'll be swapping out the downstream catalytic converter on my vehicle. My vehicle, like many others, has three catalytic converters, one on each side of the engine, which is a little smaller than what you're looking at right here. And on each side of those on the engine, there's an oxygen sensor before and after. And I'll show you that in a minute when I open up the hood. Catalytic converters are used to remove or greatly reduce pollutants from your vehicle's exhaust system before venting into the atmosphere. Catalytic converters generally last the average life of a vehicle, which is around 100 or 125,000 miles. And catalytic converters can fail a few different ways. One way is by deteriorating internally, and if you bang on it, you can hear it rattling. You're going to know that it broke apart internally, and you're going to want to replace it. You may also have one that melted down due to unburned fuel entering the catalytic converter, igniting, and melting down the substrate which is inside. Or they can fail by simply having the catalyst inside wear out. Now the inside of a catalytic converter has a small honeycomb-like structure, and you can see it right here in this image off to the right. Precious metals such as platinum, palladium, and rhodium are used as the catalyst to reduce pollutants. When a catalytic converter wears out, usually you can smell a rotten egg odor coming from the tailpipe. That odor is the result of sulfur in the fuel which is being allowed to pass through the worn out converter. I've noticed a slight odor on my vehicle which is 15 years old with 129,000 miles, which is in perfect running order, so that's why I'll be swapping mine out. Okay, let's take a quick look under the hood. Okay, here's a look under the hood at the engine. And if you look all the way forward over here where it says hot, just beneath that is one of the catalytic converters. And you can see it right here in this image. And if you look at the other side of the engine towards the firewall, this is where the other one is. And both of those come together and tie into the other catalytic converter heading towards the muffler. Okay, let's go underneath and take a look. This is a look underneath near the front bumper. You can see the two bolts I'm going to have to remove right there. And there's an oxygen sensor and the smaller catalytic converter where I showed you earlier where it says hot. That goes back. You have a flex connector there. And let me move a little bit this way. There's another couple of bolts there. Another larger flex. And then it goes down to the catalytic converter. And you can see the rubber bushings that hold it up. I'm going to undo that. And right after the catalytic converter, there's another bracket. Probably hard to see, but there's a couple of bolts there too. So the entire assembly all the way here to the end will come out in one piece so I can work on it. Okay, this is what it looks like removed from the vehicle. Everything's fine over here. You notice I'm going to have some work to do. This bracket has to stay there. That's where the rubber bushings were. So I'm going to either insert this or weld it onto that side. And over here, I might just cut this end off, weld it on here in the right spot. If it doesn't weld on here easily, then I'll just cut off the other bracket like this leading to the muffler and just use a straight tube from this one to the muffler. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, it wasn't easy, but I cut off the catalytic converter. I also cut off the end where the bolts were attached because I'm thinking of sliding that whole end with the bolts over the pipe on my new catalytic converter and just welding it. It could be a problem because it's very thick to steel. I'm going to have to heat up where it's much thicker with the two bolts and then let the heat transfer into the tubing of the new catalytic converter because if I don't do that I can end up burning a hole through the tubing of the catalytic converter. The other end I'm going to take a smaller tube, insert it into it, and then put the old tube into the new catalytic converter and I'm going to weld between the two. And before I show you that, the inside of this actually is pretty clean. A little bit of light going through there. It's a little bit less light when I look through it than the new one. There's no debris in here whatsoever and that would indicate the catalytic converters on each side of the engine have not fallen apart because sometimes what happens, those pieces will end up in here and block up the catalytic converter which is downstream. Overall, everything looked pretty good with this one, with the exception it is 15 years old, has a good amount of mileage on it, and more than likely the catalyst is a little worn out. Okay, let me show you what I'm going to be doing with the new catalytic converter. 
And right here you can see the 2 inch tube inserted into the 2 and an eighth inch tube. That's hammered all the way in. This is going to slide all the way over until this edge is flush with this edge. Going to weld it all the way around. And on this side over here, this is the ring. That's a 2 inch tube, like the one inserted over there. Fits perfectly in here. Probably put a little bead right in that edge, all the way around. And I'm going to slide it all the way on, and then put a bead in the right position, which was somewhere around 45 degrees. Let me do that, and I'll be right back. Alright, it came together pretty good, considering I haven't used my welder in a couple of years. Now let's work on the other side. Okay, as you can see, it welded together very nicely. I directed most of the heat on the heavy part of the flange, and then I moved it over towards the tubing. I didn't want to burn a hole through the tubing, and it flowed nicely. I couldn't ask for much better than that. I'm also going to be putting a new gasket on, and this over here moved a little bit when I welded it out of position, but it's still going to be okay because there's a flex connection actually in two spots on this whole assembly, which will allow me to angle this if I have to, to connect onto the muffler. Okay, let me reinstall it, we'll take a look, and then I'll start up the engine. Alright, as you can see, everything bolted back together very nicely. Down there is the catalytic converter, you can see the bottom is nice and flat, and right behind it is the muffler. Okay, let me start it up, see how it sounds. And it sounds nice and quiet. Now the benefit of doing this, I'm going to have less back pressure in the catalytic converter, which should give me a little bit more power, and my emissions are going to be a lot cleaner than what they were using the old catalytic converter. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you very much for watching.